Okay, everybody, this is another great special episode of Conspiracy 420. I'm Rocker Mike. We have Rob Rossi right here. And this is part two of our interview with Carl DeNaro. How you doing, Carl? How are you? All right. And uh, if you remember the part one episode, Carl DeNaro is a Son of Sam shooter survivor. Um, he was shot on October 23rd, 1976 in North Flushing, that's in Queens. Um, he was with his girlfriend, of girl, mm -hmm. girl he was with at the time. Okay. <laughs> Rosemary Keenan. For Keenan. discussion's sake. For, for discussion's sake, okay. Rosemary Keenan. And uh, Carl was shot in the head and has a metal plate to show for it. And he's had a, a you know, 45 years now of, of dealing with it. Hey, you know what? He's the only guy to get shot in the head and still get a shot at the ball. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's let's, right. Let's keep that rumor going. Let's you would have been, you would have been a great advertiser for Jack Daniel. <laughs> oh, yeah. I got shot that in the head, a, but I got a Jack Daniel. That, that, that is a rumor. He would not go to the hospital until he had a shot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I didn't think of that, but that really would be a good advertisement. Yeah, it would be. <laughs> In Spanish, you got some cojones, man. <laughs> so, just to kind of recap, Carl, where we were last week, um, you were shot, like I said, October 23rd, 1976, and you had several months of recovery with this. Now, during that time, the shootings were continuing, okay? And... At that point, and even up until the arrest of, of Berkowitz, um, it was believed it was just you know one shooter possibly, right? And once Berkowitz was was arrested, captured, and arrested, sent upstate, it was always believed there was one shooter. But well, that's not entirely true. Though uh, in March, March tenth, mm -hmm. uh, seventy-seven, uh, right after the Boscarichian shooting. They had uh, the police and the uh, mayor's office had a press conference yeah. saying, and we have a serial killer. Right. There was, um, there was still, it's kind of like, uh, it, 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 I'm going to say unofficially, uh, officially it was a ser one serial killer. Right. But um, if you go back and read the newspaper articles and the news clips, uh, there was there was hints of um, other people involved. Now that's based on. Uh, different cars that were seen at, uh, at I, I different shootings kind of stuff. And, and, and the yeah. scriptures, sketches, too, right? Scriptures, scriptures, scriptures. Scriptures. So, but right. it was never made like we're definitely looking for multiple. Right. They didn't tell people. the public that. And not really. Yeah. Yeah. You had to read between the lines, but yeah. it, but it was out there. But the police were were they open to that at that time, or were they really thinking it was just probably one? My, What's, I, I don't know officially, but I can give you my. My uh, my take on it, and my take on it is, they were. I think they were running around, not really know how to handle um, a serial killer. You know, how how do you catch a serial killer? You know, it's a robbery. It's kind of like you know, there's a book. You open it up, and it's like you know. It hasn't happened you know, in New York City that much. Right, there's right. It's only so, been a handful so in the history. E of New York. You know, even though you know serial yeah. killers were around, uh, certainly not in New York City. And I think, I think that the uh, but the problem of, of solving um, uh, a serial killer was was tough enough for them to even wrap their hands yeah, around. Right. If you start if you start talking about multiple shooters working together, you, you, you blow the can wide open because you know I'm not a big uh, fan of profiling, but the FBI was involved, um, and their profile pointed to one person. Um, you know, one person, one gun. Uh, serial killers don't work together. I was, yeah. I was just going to say that. We all know that. We all that. know that's not true. Of course. Yeah. Um, and, but again, I'm, uh, you know, I got to give the uh, benefit of the doubt to the police yeah. because, you know, I wasn't, a, I wasn't aware of um, these other um, uh, serial killers that worked worked as a team, and I'm not, you know, not, I'm not even going to go into. I, I don't remember their names, but. But there are there are several cases. Yeah. Where well, there was that just off the top of my head. There was that one uh, Henry Lucas. Henry Lucas. Okay. Henry yeah, Lucas and his 
friend Otis and right. They, they, they made that movie. You know who was the other guy? Um, the guy from Baltimore. It was two guys working together. Remember the sniper? The Baltimore sniper. Oh, right. DC sniper. Right. Yeah, that was that was much later. That was much But you're right. But yeah. I'm yeah. saying that was right. like who's doing this? Like one, they didn't know. It was one who's an yeah. Asian name, uh, and Lake. Okay. Uh, you know, they, I think they were in like some. Uh, a national uh, national park out, out west, probably in California. <laughs> Clipping people like snipe by yeah. sniper. Yeah, yeah, I think I heard of that. So, yeah. so there, there, there is, there. You know, serial killers do work in teams uh, on occasion, um, but I think, like I said, I, I think it was hard enough wrapping their hands around a serial killer. Yeah. You know, opening up the can of worms of, you know, multiple guns or one gun being passed around to three or four or five mm -hmm. people. Right. Uh, it was just like they couldn't wrap their hands around it and I think even more importantly they couldn't sell it to the public the public would say you know you know that's crazy, crazy. that doesn't make sense yeah it makes sense so or it could create more fear yeah well that too you know, yeah they were trying that's to get they were trying to get that reduced you know but by August 10th of 77 Berkowitz would get arrested I that's the date August 10th yeah. August 10th and um you know I mean for, for the police it was that's it it's over Okay, uh, they didn't want to hear anything else really after that. Um, he matched none of the none of the sketches really, oh, except yeah. like one. None of them. Okay, the first one. The right. first one, right? And um, you know, he ended up being sentenced. Went upstate, Attica first, moved around a couple of times, and your life went on. Okay, and you know, a few years went by, and and but I believe if I remember what you said last week, you started to have inklings that there was more to this okay there was that court case and, and right and other stuff. Case, yeah. yeah but it wasn't until you really met Maury Terry by and read well read his book in 86 87 right. and then met him a few years later um, that it, it really started to come together as well there's more to it than this all right and a big part of Maury Terry's the ultimate evil is the whole cult connection Okay, and I just want to kind of ask you about that. You know, what your your thoughts of this? Um, there's the whole thing about the Process Church. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, how that was involved. Um, the Process Church just goes back to the early '60s in England. They opened up chapters here in the United States in the '60s. Uh, Los Angeles, to New York, uh, New Orleans, I think, had a chapter. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, and uh, they were actually incorporated in, what? Uh, in Louisiana Ooh. first. Oh, they oh, were? Wow. Okay, yeah. that's where they went first. They changed their name a few times. Yeah, not to be suspicious, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, and Charles Manson had that connection with the Process Church prior to the the murders that he was involved in. Okay, we, yeah. that we know yeah. of. He admitted, well, I believe he admitted well, we that. Know, we, we know the Process can deny that, um, that Manson was involved. Um, we do know that two process members went to Manson in jail and said, basically, stop talking yeah. about his Shut up. You know, Shut but up. Yeah. but what, what, what a lot of people either forget or uh, fail to realize the significance is uh, he wrote um, the process, one of the ways they raised money was selling magazines. Yeah, they had their own publication. Yeah. He, 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 he was on the cover of one of, one of their magazines and wrote an article. Wow. Uh, I believe it was Life and Death. Uh, yeah. Was the topic. Yes. Yes. So I've seen pictures of it. You're, I, I'm not saying any more than that. How yeah. how he was connected, but for them to say he had nothing well, to do what, with it was that mm -hmm. was that published before the the, the murders or after? Uh, before his murders. Before the murders. Sixty eight. Wow. So he was already known in those that, those circles to be on the cover of the magazine. Yeah. Had to be. I, I, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was 68 that his article came out. Yeah. He also hanged out with the Beach Boy. Yes, yes, <laughs> that, was was around the same, that was around the same time. <laughs> the same yeah, time. he was hang, hanging out with Dennis Wilson and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, that yeah. A guy like that that hanged but, out with the Beach Boy then turned into my God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, you know, you, you met Maury Terry, who was the, you know, he had spent... 10 years at that point by the late 80s researching 20, 20 years wow well, he's, he's started, he started in 76 right so by 76 to 87 he wrote the book you right. met you met him in the early 90s right so he was already doing this for wow. you know 15 20 years right. at this right. point okay um 
what were you, you know, when you first met him and got into all of this, okay, you're investigating with him and, and, and speaking with him and all that, you know, at what point were you like, He's he's pretty right here. This this, this is something. You know? I I was um, I was a hundred percent sold. Um, actually, long before I met him, um, the the final nail in the coffin uh, uh, with his story was the uh, ninety three um, interviews that he did with uh, Berkowitz in jail. Yes, and when he point blank asked him, "Did you shoot Carlton Arrow?" and he said no. Basically, a woman, a woman did it. So that, uh, from that point on, I mean, that was that was the last piece of circumstantial evidence that I had. Um, starting out with the lawsuit that you talked about earlier in 1980, the book in '87, meeting the ballistics detective in '90, um, all with the same story. Um, well, you know that uh, the ballistics uh, detective told me a 90-pound weakling or a female. So. Uh, uh, you know, when Berkowitz says a female shot me three years after after that, two totally different sources that saying the same thing, saying the same thing, reading the book, and then going back to what Harry Lipsick said in 1980 that other people were involved. Yeah, um, I was convinced the night I was watching that interview in my living room, right. uh, and I met Maury. It was either a year or a year later. I'm not really sure. It was 94, 95. Um, so by the time I met him. I was already one of his, you know, uh, followers, if I will. Wow. You know, now, not, that's not to say everything Maury Terry says is right. No. You know, no. And, and if and anyone that has spent more than 10 minutes looking into the Son of Sam uh, should be able to appreciate that because uh, I've been involved in it 45 years and um, some of the simplest questions you might want to ask me, I don't know the answer to. Like, why? You know, why did the shootings happen? I really don't know. After all these years, well, I let's don't. let's let's kind of. You may not be able to answer, but let's kind of go there for a second. All right, you said you, you asked why. All right. Well, the cult that was out there, and I I I believe it existed. Okay, going by the book and everything that I've read. Well, I, it. I believe it exists. Yeah, yeah. Um, the children they were called. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now they were in Untermeyer Park. And they were doing these rituals. Now, it's possible that they may have just been high, drunk, doing drugs, whatever, okay? And it was just part of what people were into at the time, just for the hell of it. But there seemed to be more. Um, for instance, why Untermeyer Park? Well, we did a podcast yeah. about Untermeyer Park and the history of it, yeah. Samuel Untermeyer and... and, and the possible occult connections that he had. And David Berkowitz himself, I believe, told Maury Terry, I believe it was Maury Terry, that, um, uh, what's his name? I can't remember now. Hunter my, uh, no, um, um, Crowley? Crowley? Yeah, Al excuse me, Alistair Crowley, who's the biggest occult figure of the last 150 years, right. okay, was a member of the Golden Dawn, which we know he mm -hmm. was, which was a big occult group yeah. in, in New York City and of the world, and the uh, at the turn of the century into 20th century, early 20th century. Uh, but he says that Samuel Untermeyer was also a member of the Golden Dawn. Yeah. So when you go to Untermeyer Park and you look around, <laughs> um, there's a lot of questions like, why is this here? What is this? This architecture? Okay, why is it that you know? This, there's an area there where there's two Roman pillars looking out onto the Hudson. Very beautiful. Yeah. Okay. But if you lift up the tiles, which you can't do now, there was an area under there with just a couple of stone benches, almost like an altar. Right. Why would that be there? Right in front of the, the Hudson River. You're looking at. I mean, there's some there's some, some occult kind of stuff going oh, on in, in the architecture. Yeah, just I, in the architecture. Yeah, I don't think I don't think at this stage of the certainly with the Son of Sam investigation, yeah. um, we you know obviously there's detractors and not everyone agrees on everything. Mm -hmm. And I think one thing that we all can agree on is uh, 
Hunter Meyer Park is uh, is a spooky place. It's a crazy place. <laughs> and, and I haven't been there, but um, a lot of people, well, then yeah. you can attest, a lot of people have said when they're walking through, they they just get this like creepy it, feeling. You, you get a feeling, well, a creepy feeling, and there's, no, and there's there's not a sound. You don't hear a bird, you don't hear a bug, you don't hear anything. Yeah, it's... And, you know, that's strange. So, and just, uh, I just want to make a note about Hunter Meyer. Um, again, I, I've never even been there. I've mm -hmm. driven past it a couple times, but um, uh, I, my, my uh, one of my sister in laws, her husband grew up in um, Yonkers. In Yonkers, and uh, long before, I, I really do forget the timeline, but I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna guess it was the early '90s. Um, we were talking about this whole Hunter Meyer Park and the cult and everything. Yeah. And again, I'm I'm still kind of a newbie, you know. I mean, I don't have all, I don't have any research under my belt. I just have Maury Terry's book yeah. and uh, maybe even the interviews. I'm I'm not sure when it happened. But the point I wanted to make was this guy grew up in Yonkers and he says every he goes that yeah if you were an altar boy, you know, at some point you hung out onto Meyer Park. It, it wasn't just, um, it, you know, I mean, I, I think, I don't know, coming from Queens, you know, we had, you know, we, we had Crocher on Park was, was yeah. my park. Um, we did a lot of stuff there, keg yeah. party Sunday afternoon, um, you know, cut school, you know, I smoke a joint, we'd, yeah. you know, go to Crocher on Park. Um, uh, my understanding is Untermeyer was like that, and there was, it was such a big park that there was, you know, there was like high school, Catholic high school girls hanging out over here. Yeah. You know, the, the hippies over here. The, you know, yeah. and and um, as the night progressed, um, they said I found out kind of recently that um, uh, it was also uh, the site of uh, many impromptu uh, concerts. You know, <laughs> a bunch of guys would show yeah, up with show their up with equipment and, and they jamming. start jamming. Start yeah, jamming. Um, you could do that. So, yeah, I could see that. Yeah, yeah. So it's it. You know, uh, I know some people have this this thing of like you know, twelve people in hoods with a fire in the middle or chanting, and it's like, you know, um, it, it, and that that was it. And it's like, what? Why would you even think to go there? Well, it really wasn't like that. But the place is so big that, from what I understand, that there's places you can go where you could be totally secluded, especially back then. Right. Uh, not so much now because right. they're, they're they, fixing they, it they all clean, they cleaned it up. Right. But there's remnants of stuff from that time. Right. Even graffiti left over that you could see. Right. Okay. That's like, whoa, there's yeah. something going so on. So it, it's not as clear cut, yeah. and I think that's the main point I want to make. Yeah. You know, Meyer Park, it's not as clear cut as you might well, think it is as far as. I, I think it's possible that you had. You know, like you said, your Catholic girls over here, your hippies over here. I didn't mean to single Catholic girls. I'm fine. No, it's just <laughs> don't know Catholic school. Uh -oh. Okay, but but I like, I like the skirts, you know. But, yeah, I, but, I, I think uh, Billy Joel did a song about that. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But you could have also had your, you know, your occultists. Without okay? a doubt. Okay, in their little area by the Devil's Gate, the Pump House, the this, all yeah. that stuff, in the, the Croton uh, Aqueduct Trail, and all that. Um, but, but what I was trying to say is, you know, it seems like, knowing that history, that there was a reason that they were in that park, okay, because of the history that they knew. Ber yeah. Berkowitz knew that Samuel Untermeyer might have been in, in, the, in the occult and connected him with Alistair Crowley. Now, there's no, there's no direct connection between the two. I've done my research. There is some circumstantial kind of stuff. Yeah, I, but so I, I'm, I'm going to just yeah. yeah. yeah I'm just going to just say who knows. I, I would yeah. I would say Michael Carr had more to do with with that that Crowley well, until well, Meyer. Well, Mike, wow. right. now, then, Michael then Carr, then wow. and that, that's true because Michael Carr was uh, he started off in uh, in uh, Scientology, okay, right. and then may have crossed over into the Process Church because there is a connection. Between, Without between a doubt, the I mean, the process the, the was a the process was a branch of yeah. the Scientology at right. one point. But it, the process were people that got kicked out of Scientology. Think about well, that. Left that because of left. yeah, well, yeah. actually, yeah. The, the, the two the two that started yeah. uh, the, the, Brit the British and couple, they got yeah. kicked out. Mary and they, they, they yeah they were they were high level attempts yeah, I think they called them and they basically took 
the philosophy of Scientology tweaked it a little bit yeah. and came up with the, the, the process, the, the the process, process church, yeah. the final judgment. But also, that's what I'm going to go back to the whole, like, you want to talk about we weird culture. It's like Bohemian Grove where everybody was there in the hoods and there were all these politicians. Right. And there was right. all kind of crazy shit. Yeah, so exactly. everybody had well, dirt on each other. That's, you know? yeah. so that's, that might have been the same thing with the process church. I know what you did. I know what you did. Somebody got to take the rap. Well, yeah. And, 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 you know, Berkowitz, it seems all these years, has taken the rap because he hasn't, you know, he's dropped hints, but he hasn't really talked. Yeah. Right. So I want to kind of get into the, the, the big part here, okay? And, and that is in the last part of the conspiracy show that we did, the last interview, you mentioned how you've been in contact with David Berkowitz. And you were making plans to go up there, which you did go up there. Okay, I did. Um, we'll talk about that in a second. But with your book, okay, which I'm going to show everybody now. You got it. You're right. Okay, right here. Right it's, it's it's the Son of Sam and Me: The Truth About Why I Wasn't Shot by David Berkowitz. And this just came out this year. Carl wrote this great, easy read. Okay. Go on Amazon. And, yeah. written, and even a few photos. Yeah, yeah. A, few, a few pictures you might not have ever seen, but. One thing I wanted to get into here is, you know, towards the end of the book, you talk about your correspondence that you've been having with, with David. Right? right. And, you know, okay, like one thing, for instance, in one of the first emails you have here, it said, um, you said, I would love, you're writing to, to David, you said, I would love to sit down and talk and pray with you, man to man, and put this ugly piece of history behind us both. David is all I'm looking for. David, all I'm looking for is closure. I know you didn't shoot me, and you are truly sorry for the pain caused by some bad decisions. I am hoping that both our souls will be cleansed and we can move on. Meeting with you could be a cathartic experience for both of us. Please write me as soon as you're able. Looking forward to hearing from you. Stay well called in Arlo. Now, my question to you is, you met him November 20th. Yes. Was it cathartic? It was. It was definitely cathartic. Wow. Even it was nerve wracking. Even though you you know in your gut he didn't shoot you. It's it's still it, it it's uh, I I I'm not sure if I can put it into words. Sure. But, uh, uh, he's, he's he's still a serial killer. Yeah. So oh, yeah. The, you know. Uh, you know, I don't want to get into it now, but just approaching the prison and um, all the emotion. Um, and I'm not going to lie to you, I was scared, scared out of my mind. My knees were shaking. Yeah. Um, it, it's, uh, yeah. And um, do you just, have a few Jack Daniels before you saw them? <laughs> unfortunately, it was it was nine. It was ten o'clock in the morning, and. The answer is no. Okay. And by the way, I don't drink Jack Daniels anymore. No, no, in, fact, no. in fact, the, the even, smell of it, the smell even, of it. You've had enough. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. I actually had a couple of years after I was shot. I had um, when I was able to drink. I shouldn't even say a couple of years. It was after I was able to drink. Drinking, yeah, so it was yeah. probably like eight, eight or nine months. Excuse me, eight or nine months after uh, being shot. My friend, um, uh, we went out and. And he bought me a shot at Jack Daniels, and <laughs> it was the worst shot I've ever had in my life. Now, not to say I don't do shots anymore, because I do, yeah. but I, but Jack Daniels just, yeah. I, You're done with it. I'm done. But you do the story. You know, it's kind of like the alcohol that the the first alcohol you yeah. got drunk, you oh, got yeah. sick on. You can't you'll never go again. near. Yeah. Well, that that's Jack Daniels. That was for Bacardi me. to me. Yeah. I've yeah. never drink Bacardi <laughs> in my life. Bacardi. I just smell Bacardi. Bacardi, can, Bacardi can be nasty. Right, right. I don't like sweet stuff too much. So. Even though he didn't shoot me, um, it's still nerve-wracking. Wow. I think if he did shoot me, I, I'll be honest with you, I'm not sure I'd have the nerve to, 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 to go face-to-face -face with him. Um, it was hard enough, and I'm 100% convinced, and I have been for years and years, that he didn't shoot me. It was still very difficult, so I, I, I would think that if, um, if I thought he shot me, um, I, I, I wouldn't have made that trip up to uh, Shawangark. Wow. Yeah. Now, that what I had just read, he had responded to you with this. 
Yes. And he said, Dear Carl, I received your letter, which I downloaded from the community kiosk just yesterday. Hearing from you is surreal. I never thought the day would come. Thank you. I wanted to reach out, if this is even the best way to say it, reach out to you and the other victims and their families for the longest. Prison rules prohibit this, but I am, I am not permitted to contact you on my own. Thus, your email is an answer to my prayers. Now, if everybody's not aware, David Berkowitz has his own Christian ministry now. Yeah. So he, he's religious and he's found God and all that. Um, but do you feel he was sincere when you met him? It, it, as far as like wanting to meet you and apologize or kind of sure, I can explain I can, something. I, to I, you. I can explain that. Um, the, the, the short answer is yes, okay. um, but I think it, it deserves some uh, some clarification. Um, okay. uh, I, I went with um, my girlfriend Trish and uh, a good friend of mine, Howie, um, who's also um, a journalist. And um, he also has some connections in Co-op City where Berkowitz grew up. You know, his his grand his grandmother was friends with Berkowitz's um, father, so they had. You know, um, I kind of brought him up there to basically give me some moral support, and, and this, especially if I forgot to ask a question. How he would be there, but even more importantly, it turned out to be a good thing. Um, you know, if the conversation got uh, there was a lull in the conversation or a you know a log jam. Um, you know how we kind of interjected with some. And, you know, remember hanging out at the, the candy store on you know on the on the turn or whatever. Yeah. I forget the you know, but um, bringing Berkowitz back to his his teenage home uh, was. Uh, you could see it in his face. It, you know, he, he, his face just lit yeah. up. Maybe you know, loosened him up a little bit. It loosened him up yeah. exactly. Uh, so, so that that was really good. Now, as far as him being sincere, um, one thing that all three of us, the first thing we talked about when we got out of the prison was um, his his tells, and uh, he had three three distinct tells that we all picked up on. Tells that he wasn't telling the truth. Well, one was he. He knew the truth. He knew the answer and wasn't going to say it. He really didn't know the answer to the question, um, and I lost my train of thought. That's well, his different answer. tells. Right. So, so, but it was very. And when he was out now, that's right. the third Straight tell. Line. Um, right. Sorry about that. That's, that's okay. a, That's a senior moment. <laughs> I get um, him too. But uh, it, it, it was it was funny, and then we just started. And this is even before we got in the car. This is just when we walked out. The wow. front door to prison on our way to the parking lot and we just started all three of us started like remember when I said this remember when he said this remember the look on his face and we by the time we got to the call we agreed we, we brought up maybe seven or eight different instances where it was clearly he was lying it was, like, it was wow. clear that he knew the answer um, but didn't want to tell us like you know for example he'd hang his head he'd, he'd hang his head down and like no nah, yeah. no nah, I can't and that, that's what he knew the answer. He just wasn't going to tell yeah, me. Yeah, he couldn't get you know? it. And then when he, he didn't know the answer, he'd look you right in the eye and say, I don't know. You know? Well, and, I mean, you could tell. Uh, I guess, I don't know, you know, naysayers will say, well, you know, he's playing you know, like a fiddle, and yeah. maybe so. Um, I've been around myself. <laughs> you know, uh, I think I'm a pretty good judge of character. Uh, and, uh, and I believe. I... I, I I, I believe I saw the real David Barkowitz, uh, you know, the current David Barkowitz, and uh, wow. and, and I believe that he uh, he's everything he says he is. He's sorry. Uh, he wishes he could take it back. Um, uh, you know, it, you know, we still have we still have that one that went that one major issue, and that is there's certain things he knows that he won't tell me. He won't tell. Yeah. And. Uh, I'm forever hopeful that uh, ensuing visits, I will get my answers. Um, I can tell you, I can tell you one of his fears, uh, which I thought was really strange because it never even dawned to me. Although I did say in that letter, uh, I want closure. Um, he was once he loosened up. Uh, I met with him for three and a half hours. Wow. The conversation, the conversation was all over the place. So when I'm retelling the story, 
the story's all over the place, but I'm almost, I think I might even be doing it as, yeah, as it actually happened, because it was just all over the place. Right. Um, but w one of the things was uh, that really struck me was, so we started talking about Mesa Moskowitz and uh, how, and I, I knew about this, that they N were very close N to- Mesa Moskowitz was Stacy Moskowitz's mom. Right. And she was she was the last the last, uh, the victim. last uh, victim of uh, the Son of Sam shootings, and uh, you know Nace is the one that you know during the press conferences you know would go crazy. He's yeah. an animal. Yeah, and, yeah. she but, was the lady with the big glasses. Right. right. <laughs> o over the years, she 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 came to you know talking to Maury Terry, and she came to realize that Berkowitz was did not shoot Couldn't her daughter, right. and um, that would that. That last case, uh, that last shooting, is um, is uh, really the the centerpiece of the conspiracy uh, uh, theory and the Son of Sam because sure. wow. uh, it's uh, it, it, it's uh, I think it's physically impossible. I think Maury Terry proved that that was physically impossible for Berkowitz to to. Uh, uh, get a ticket on his car, walk to the car, rip the ticket Make off, it, get in the car, follow the cops away from the shooting scene, and then somehow miraculously get to the shooting scene all within like seven minutes. Um, wow. And this is from eyewitnesses. Yeah. Um, and, and plus the way when the way the gunman ran off is not the way Berkowitz runs. Right. And, and that's as per Tom Uzano, another eyewitness. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. So, he, he uh, Berkowitz was talking about meeting with with uh, NASA and um, was this back in the culture? 90s or something? This is back in the nineties, yeah. and um, unfortunately, she had a rough life. As uh, a lot of a lot of people connected to Son of Sam uh, had a really rough life after that. Um, I, I'm not including me in that, um, but. Um, she, you know, all three of her daughters had had died. Her husband just passed away, and she was struggling financially. Sure. And um, somebody put in her ear that you should get paid for this, you should film it, and uh, sell it to the networks for you know Four millions of dollars. Yeah. And Parkwood said no. And he said, I, he goes, I'd love for you to come up and visit me. But Did they even allow that in the prison? Oh yeah. And it might allow something like that. Uh, well, hey, you, you know, it, it, we'll we'll we'll, we'll get we'll, we'll, Glory we'll, Terry interviews. Now we'll, we'll we'll get into that because uh, there's kind of a funny story that okay. there, okay. Uh, or an interesting story anyway. Um, so anyway, she um, she demanded you know to get, have it filmed. He said no, and uh, it's, it's one place that the prisoner uh, is it's one aspect where the prisoner actually has has the uh, the hammer. The hammer. Um, the prisoner can choose to meet you or not meet with you, and the prisoner can choose to be filmed or not to be filmed. Yeah. And he just said no. He goes, "It doesn't mean I don't want to talk to you." The reason I'm telling you all this is, it dawned on me about I guess maybe two hours into this uh, discussion with uh, David Berkowitz, is that this is the first time a victim or anyone. Uh, a relative of the son of Sam has met with Berkowitz face to face and he had an opportunity to apologize for the first time in 45 years yes and uh, and believe me that was powerful right um, and, uh, now, more, more, so, more so for him don't don't get course. me wrong but of course. and Maury Terry of course visited him a couple of times but he was just an investigator right yeah. he's had he's had yeah. many visitors but uh, and it didn't really and it should have dawned on me uh, what I was preparing, you know, driving up to the prison. Yeah. Um, but it really, it really did, and it really struck me. It was like, wow, I, this is kind of, um, and, um, uh, you know, it's a big moment, in, you know, in the Son of Sam. Um, not that anything was accomplished or anything was said, but it's just a big moment in the history. Just, just the fact that 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 um, you know, a victim of, you know, again, he didn't shoot me, but the son of Sam did, yeah. and he was part of the son of Sam. Um, he was there at my shooting, so, you know, uh, he's already admitted that, uh, and and it gave him closure, and it, I took that opportunity to tell him that, um, I said, I'm glad, and I actually wrote a follow-up letter to him a couple of days after our meeting, 
thanking him for his time. Not that he's got other things yeah. to do, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I thought it'd well, be nice if I thanked him to for his sure. time. Right. And, and I, I said, I said, you know, it's a two-way street. I said, I'm, I'm really glad that I was able to provide you with an opportunity to actually apologize in person to somebody that you affected. Right. And um, I said, but it's a two-way street. And I said, you know, I need to, now you have some kind of closure as best I can provide for you. Um, but I still don't have closure. And wow. I said, you know, you have to, you know, it's a two-way street. And um, and I said this, on, to, I think, twice during our actual meeting. And, uh, you know, so, okay. the, uh, so the, 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 the funny, not the funny, ironic thing, um, the night before, uh, Friday night, I was sitting there and I said, yeah, I, I should probably look up. Uh, my girlfriend drives. I don't drive, so. I have to, she usually takes care of the GPS, yeah. but I figured I should be proactive. <laughs> I should be proactive and at least have an idea of where this place is. Right, right. I mean, I, I knew it was close to Middletown, but uh, that's really not good when you're driving. Yeah. You know? So I was Googling it, and, um, and I went to the, uh, the, the New York State Prison website, and I see this thing that says, your um, victims victims of, of, of crimes can't meet with with their with the, their the assailant. Yeah, that's yes. a, yeah. And I'm like, oh crap. I said, hey, so we're going to drive all the way up there. As I'm saying this myself, and we're not going to be allowed in. And my girlfriend's going to are you kidding me? We wasted a whole Saturday. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm going up there anyway because I'll plead. And I started thinking about it. I said, wait a minute. I know, I know what the deal is, but as far as the legal profession. Yeah. He was he was uh, he he was never even charged for attempted murder on on anyone. Um, when he was charged wow. with six murders, and that's what he's in jail for. He's in jail for six murders, and that's it. And not not the attempted, attempted murder. Not the people that were no. Wounded. Now I can tell you, I know I know for a fact because I sat wow. next to him, but myself, Judy Placido, and there was somebody else there. I'm not sure who who it was, but it was somebody from Queens. And this is for the grand jury to decide that I have a case. Yeah. And of course, I didn't see anything. Um, I have no idea. It's all private. So we, I'm in a waiting room with Judy Placido. And we just, you know, kind of, I joked around <coughs> about, you know, she didn't have to get her hair cut. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm sitting there with a shaved head, you know. I said, that's <laughs> not fair. She still had long, beautiful <laughs> brown hair, you know. Um, but, uh, you know, she went in and said whatever she said. I went in and said, yeah, I didn't say anything. You know, they asked you, you know, your name, address, yeah. who you are. Uh, and um, and I guess it was just a formality because that was never, that, the, those charges were never brought up. So, you know, would be, you know, Damasi, myself, Judy, My you know, uh, uh, it, it actually, you're right, even Violante was, uh, yeah. was not, because, you know, thank God you didn't die. Yeah. But um, so the, the other the other thing when I'm going through this, oh my God, I'm not going to be allowed in um, to the prison. Was uh, all the letters that you write, um, it, uh, it, it, the prison reads them before the prisoner gets them. Yes. They want to make sure there's no screen. secret codes, and you know you're not you know plotting to overthrow the world. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, it, it's so like so they read the it so. You know, you send, excuse me, you mail, you know, email, and um, like, it would, depending, sometimes he gets it the next day, sometimes it takes two or three days. I guess it, it, the, the guards are in the mood to read right. fan mail, they don't. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, so they knew I was coming. That that was my... They were expecting. That was my thinking. I said, yeah. they know I'm coming because the, the last letter I sent them was like five days before and yeah. said, you know, look, you know, um, he I'm told me... Up. He told me the visiting hours are eight to three, and uh, I said, "Well, you know, it's it's a two-hour drive." I said, "You know, uh, my guess is we'll you know we'll get there about nine thirty ten, and uh, you know, looking forward to seeing you uh, this Saturday." So I know they knew we were coming, and um, and it, it was a non-issue. Just <laughs> the end of the story is they didn't even question us. I mean, they knew. They they didn't allude, they, uh, allude that they knew me. They knew who I was. But uh, it's kind of funny when you said, you know, who you hear to visit. And I, 
I don't know why I did this, but I did. Like Dave Park Lindsay, I like Hudson Barris, you know. Yeah. And he's like, guys, hey, someone's here to see Dave. <laughs> By now, like, he's on a first name basis it's for like, everybody, probably. Dave? Yeah. <laughs> Dave. Dave. Let me ask a question. Yeah. When you met him, was it like behind the glass or were you No, okay, right that's, like, that's a good yeah, question. Yeah, good question. Because uh, a few of my friends, that was the I'm first curious. question. Yeah. And um, so we all have this vision of prison. I'm going to, I'll get to your, your point in a second. Yeah. But you know every prison movie you've seen, it's the phone. You know you drive in, drive in, right. and there's, there's like this long mile road. Right. That's exactly that's exactly the way it is. <laughs> yeah, we got off this this little two lane road, and um, this little sign says Shawagum Correctional, and Walk Hill Correctional is right next to it, mm -hmm. and they they built it there on purpose so they can share. You know, deliveries and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you go in, and I swear it's got like a, it's like a mile long road, and it's just green grass, flat as can be. And out in the distance, there's this ominous building with a gun turret. And as you get closer, <laughs> there's a guard up there with a, you know, I think he had a shotgun. He was, it's pretty high up. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, and. As you pull into the parking lot, he yeah. waves to you. Yeah. It's kind of weird. Yeah. Then we get out of the car, and there's barbed wire, like the shiniest, sharpest barbed wire I've ever seen. In my life. <laughs> Not, I don't know what they. I think they call it ribbon, ribbon barbed wire. Yeah. And it, it was just like like a knife that was like a you know. Sure. It's like razor edges told me. <coughs> yes, right. right. <clears throat> Not the kind you see in the forums with the little twisted no, metal. I know yeah. exactly what you mean. Yeah. yeah. And that went from the ground up ten feet. Right. 10 feet high yeah, yeah. Uh, and it stopped right at the corner of the building and started at the other end of the building wow. and uh and we, we walk in and uh hey again it's the, i have to say that the uh the people who worked there the correction officers were more than very nice you know very helpful um telling us to you know go back to your car just you're better off leaving you know your wallet in the car as opposed to leaving in the locker because um, you can't go in with anything uh, you can only go in with change, dollar bills, and a credit card, and that's for the vending machines. Yeah. No pens, no no keys, no, keys, no, no, no yeah. camera, no phone, no nothing. Um, actually, uh, Trish had a, a, a Fitbit on, and as she's getting her picture taken, the, the guard noticed the Fitbit, and he said, you got to take that off because it, you can't. I don't think you can send messages, but you get text messages on it. Yeah, that. So, well, yeah. yeah. Um, so the, the the next you know you go through security like like the airport and you know um, metal detector metal detector and then they they wand you uh, it, it was all very very nice though it wasn't you know, they didn't treat you like you know a piece of garbage whatever yeah. um, uh, a lot of paperwork you have to fill out you know who you are and why you're there and what's your relationship. Did you have to show ID, obviously? You have license. to show ID, yeah. yeah. And then you get your picture taken. And I, I, we weren't fingerprinted, but a shorter fingerprint, which it was, I said it's probably easy to get out of this prison than to get in. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then the next thing was the, the, uh, the trip from the visitor area to where you meet the prisoners. And, uh, and I guess if you've been in prison, uh, as a visitor, uh, or or as an inmate, you probably know this, but I, it was kind of a shock to me. That, you know, you'd walk into a room, the gate would open. You know, like jail bars would slide open. Slide you'd get side. in, and then they close the and end. then it would close, and then the door, the the gate in front of you would open, and then right. you would walk down the hallway, and then the gate would close, and you'd stand there wait. Once the gate closed, the next gate opened. And I don't know, a series of seven or eight of those. Wow. And we go into this room. I'm getting to your your actual question. Yeah. And uh, it looks like a cafeteria. Okay. You know, there's table. There's, you know, six foot long tables, vending machines uh, along the wall, and uh, there's some kids running around. Uh, and it's like this is this so. There's, is other, weird. there's there's other visitors with other prisoners. Yes, there. and it, being it's a Saturday, it's crowded, which is why it took as long as it. It probably took us close to an hour to check in. So he's mixed in wow. with everybody. Yeah. So okay. So I'm standing at the desk, uh, and I'm, there's obviously there's guards wherever you go, sure. and uh, 
and said, "Well, you here to see?" And we, I, we had, yeah, we had a piece of paper. We had to give them the, the paper, and it's like, "Oh, you know, Berkowitz." And I said, and I turned to Trish, and I said, "I, I don't see him." But it's a long room, as you know. Like, you know, I mean, I never met him before, but I've seen a zillion pictures. But who knows? You know, maybe, <laughs> maybe he changed or whatever. I don't know. So I'm like, I don't see him, and and she overheard me to go and said, "No, he didn't. He didn't come down yet." So, uh, so they they ushered the, another guard walked us into a room. Now this room is is packed, and I'm looking at it, there's no tables. Yeah, like, that's not going to be good because if he's going to tell me anything, he's not going to tell me with another prisoner right next to him. Right. And uh, next thing you know, they're we walk down, and I thought they were going to bring us to a table and tell somebody to shove over to give us room. And they make a right, and there's another room, another like a quarter of the size, yeah. but the same thing, cafeteria style, maybe maybe eight tables. Okay. And uh, they put us in the corner, and were you alone in there? Well, that that's that's what I'm in. And so there's a guard up on a, you know, up on a, you know, like they have a Penn Station, you know, yeah. with the, the police thing and stuff like that. Like a platform. Like a platform. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and he's got glass around him, but it, it's all open. And there's, you know, there's Berkowitz sitting at the, um, oh no, I'm sorry. They, they brought brought us in, and we were just kind of standing there, and um, they were saying, all right, well, you know, you you know, usually, and he looks at the guy, because usually the prisoner sits at this end of the table, so you, and he points at Trish, you sit here, how you sit there, Carl, you sit how, here. How far apart? Um, six foot table. Three feet wide, you know, standard okay. cafeteria yeah, table okay. at either end, and so I was um, okay. probably as far as I am to uh, to, to you, Rob. Rob. Close, yeah, okay. oh, close, yeah. yeah. So uh, he walks in, and we we all kind of it was like an awkward. <laughs> it was yeah. it was very it was very weird. Um, shake the beginning. Hey, well, it was it, 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 oh yeah. yeah. So <laughs> I'm glad you said it. So. <laughs> I got a funny story at the end of this. <laughs> so yeah, there was a handshake, and uh, um, Howie Howie's Jewish. Um, you know, Berkowitz is Jewish, but now he's born again. So he Howie wanted he wanted to bring yarmulkes, and and he was going to teach me a prayer. And I'm like, I said, why don't we play this by your let yeah. Berkowitz call the shots on yeah. this, you know? And um, I thought sure Berkowitz would. Um, because I even said in a letter, and I said that to appease him. I hope everyone realizes that. Um, uh, although I am a, a, a you know a, a spiritual guy, and I do pray. Yeah. Um, as I you know, I mean, if Berkowitz wanted to pray with me, I would. I would yeah. never turn it down. But it was just something to appease him. Sure. Believe it or not, he. I thought sure he'd want to start this thing off with with a prayer. Did come up? Didn't come up at all. So we shook hands. And we kind of gave, you know, not really a hug, but, you know, kind of leaned in. And, um, like of course, I did that. Um, Trish <laughs> did this. <laughs> to the yeah, eye. Yeah. She's still, no, she's yeah. still a little like, I'm not sure I want to get that close. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I, not, not to blame her. Understandable. I, yeah. Understandable. You know, and uh, uh, to be honest with you, I'm not sure. I think how we, I'm sure how we shook his hand. I'm sure how we did the the shoulder thing yeah, too. Yeah. So uh, the funny, the funny thing is, before I forget, is, and, and this this actually happened at very close to the end. Um, I did notice, um, I did notice uh, Berkowitz like looking around at times, like you know, I starting like that. So I'm facing the crowd. He's 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 facing the crowd this way. I'm facing the crowd this way. How he's got his back to the crowd, and Trish is kind of she would have to like. To the return, and uh, so I started looking around, and what I realized, what I realized, who was doing was people were. Um, up. We had the room to ourselves in the beginning. I'm, I know I'm jumping all over the place, but uh, so I said, "Oh, we got like special treatment because it's Parkwood." Yeah. And so we're in a room by ourselves. No, it wasn't special treatment. That room was crowded. They opened up the next room. We happened to be the first people in there. Oh, okay. Because yeah. by a, a half Just hour by later, every table was filled. Wow. And um, what I noticed was people, prisoners, because you could tell who the prisoners are. Yeah. You know, and it, for the most part, there's female visitors because most of the, the inmates are male. There's no, there's no women in that prison. I don't think. No, no. no. 
So uh, it was quite obvious, and you could see that the prisoners were talking to their loved ones. And, yeah. You know, that's 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 the famous Berkowitz. That's the same. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, I pi I picked up on that. You know, so as I'm doing this, I look over by the guard stand, and there's a big, big handwritten sign. It was Sharpie, and it says "No kissing" in big letters, yeah. and then small letters that I couldn't read because I had my my glasses. So, <laughs> when it turned out, it, it it turned out what it said was, uh, you you know, you can kiss when you first meet and you can kiss when you're leaving, but yeah. they, they don't want people making, making out. out. Right? Yeah. So, I don't know what possessed me, but um, I, I like to think I'm a funny guy. And, you are uh, a funny guy. At one point, I turned to Barkley and I said, David, I said, see that sign? No kissing. <laughs> <laughs> he laughed. He laughed, yeah. He, he, actually, he actually has a, a very good sense of humor, yeah. um, which, I, I don't know, 45 years in jail, I'm not sure. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I I'm not sure how I, I don't I don't think I could survive for forty five years in a in a jail setting. But yeah. So uh I hope I answered your question. Yeah, that was I, I, I know I I know I colored it up a bit, but no, it's no, all true. I'm just saying you guys mean it and um, you know, that that first reaction you mean in a guy that you know, a serial killer technically and What's your first reaction? It's the handshake, and what was after that? Did you just sit down and start having a conversation? What went after yeah, that? Pre yeah, pre pretty much. I, you know, I, I and I was a little nervous about it. how. You know, how yeah. do you? You know, I know. Hey, I, thank you for shooting me. Well, not yeah, shooting me. Yeah. Whatever. How you doing? Well, he, he actually made it easier because he yeah. started out with a, a um, you know, an apology. Right. Uh, he probably apologized six times during the three and a half hours. Whenever he, whenever the opportunity arose. He would just repeat and, and, it's and, like, and just as you said, you were the first visitor. He's never obviously had a chance to to apologize right. to anybody to their face. Exactly. Okay. So, so that was it really was big. Going back to what I asked originally, it was cathartic for both of you, um, in a sense, without a doubt. Yeah. Um, you you might even say I'm not even sure this is true, but I'll you know he might have gotten more at it than I did. Well, um, but I yeah. still say, you know, how he asked me, how do you rate this? And he said a five. And I'm like, no. I said, I actually rated like an eight or a nine. Um, and the only reason it's not a ten is because, you know, I had a few questions that I was hope, hoping he would answer, and he did. Yeah. But other than that, it was everything I hoped for, everything I wanted, especially in the first meeting. Yeah. Um, I got one more question. Do you get your picture with him? Ah, another another interesting side note <laughs> so apparently at Sullivan County they had a kiosk with like a backdrop I think I told you guys yeah. that and you know you could pick like different seasons uh, that's Sullivan County at Shawagunk they have um, apparently they have a, like a roving photographer um, that's his job I, I don't know if he's I, I, I believe it's an outside company um, and they have someone there during all visiting hours, but because of COVID, there's no. Um, we had to, we had to wear a mask the whole time. Oh, oh wow! I was I was going to ask. I forgot to add that. Was that. Was the yeah. other thing. Um, I was going to ask that. Which yeah. made that three and a half hours longer than it should have been. But um, yeah. Uh, you know, Did I you mean, get into a conversation about COVID? Like, um, you know, we we I talked about it in some of the letters um, that you know, just like you know. I mean, you got to wonder what he knows as of what's oh, going they, on in the they, outside world. He, they, he pretty much, they, they pretty much know yeah. what what's going on um, as far as you know the shots and you know and people dying from COVID. Well, <coughs> um, we, we didn't really. I think we made a couple of comments saying, you know, what a pain he is with the mask. wearing a mask. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't it wasn't a big. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> All right. So, you just said how, you know, there were some questions that he couldn't answer or wouldn't answer. Okay, now, in your book, one of the letters that you wrote to him, emails that you wrote to him, uh, one part of it said, uh, you know, I'm hoping you'll be willing to share a few thoughts from the past with me. As I have stated several times, I am just looking for closure. With Rosh Hashanah just behind us, I thought this would be a good time to start this dialogue. Was I a target? Was I targeted to be a victim? Who made that decision? 
You told Maury on national TV that you didn't shoot me, but you know a woman shot me. Maury had given me both of the following names. Was it a woman named Amy, or was it Wheat Carr? Now, did you ask these questions to him pretty much in, the, in this way when you spoke to him? Did you say, who shot me, David? Yes. Okay. And what yes. was his reaction to that? That's when, that's when he, um, that's when he, that's when he did his, um, I know the answer, but I'm not telling you. Mm -hmm. It was basically, you know, something along these lines, like, uh, I can't, I can't, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Just can't do it. Yeah. Wow. And you, you could see he was pained, and, uh, and again, we all, all three of us could be wrong, but all three of us agreed that, um, it, 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 when he did that, it was very sincere. Yeah. Uh, there's, you know, I mean, anything's possible, but all three of us agreed that he was 100% sincere, that for whatever reason, um, he knew the answer, but for whatever reason, he wasn't going to tell me, not then. Right. You know? Now, well, now, now, Wheat Carr was the sister of John and Michael Carr, the right. daughter of Sam Carr, and she was the dispatcher yeah. at the Yonkers police station that the, the Brooklyn sergeant had called to see if they knew anything about David Berkowitz based on that ticket. Okay, they knew he was registered up in Yonkers, lived, lived up there, had a car registered there. And she, when she answered that call, said, oh yeah, we know him, and you know, she gave it up right there, that, that you know. Right. Now, you know, getting back to the idea of a fall guy, okay, and Berkowitz really has been all these years, Michael Carr was, was killed, John Carr was killed, okay, and, John Carr was killed violently. Okay, Michael too on the West Side Highway. Mm -hmm. John Carr was shot um, in North Dakota. Now, we, being the sister, and being so like at that phone call, almost sounding like she knows something. Okay, they never really questioned the police, right? Until until <laughs> they didn't quite. As far as I know, they didn't question her as a suspect. No, well, um, just for information. But um, I well, I, I mean, it certainly came came out to uh, it was public knowledge because the um, the transcript of her conversation as a dispatcher um, with uh, Detective Justice, I believe it was, right. uh, who was calling just to you know calling Yonkers Police as a you know hey can you get in touch with this Parkwoods guy you know we think he you know. They didn't think he was a, a suspect. They thought he was a witness. There's, you know, a guy who lives in Yonkers gets a ticket at two in the morning, um, you know, three, four blocks away from a shooting. He might know something, and and we, you know, went, you know, but, I mean, this is all public knowledge now. Um, you know, we went on this, you know, oh yeah, you know, I, I think he's the son of Sam. He did this, that, the other thing. Um, so, so the police are certainly aware of her. She also. Um, I don't know if she shared in the, in the award money, uh, but she certainly got a citation uh, from the wow. Yonkers Police Department. And again, this is public knowledge. It's in a newspaper. There's a newspaper clipping of, you know, um, I, I don't even know who he is, uh, the chief of police. Uh, giving her an award. Uh, giving her an award, yeah. yeah. I mean, that was in, uh, in the Yonkers paper way back wow. when. And, and she, was, um, she was questioned by uh, Queen's DA. Uh, John Santucci. Yes. And when uh, they reopened the case. When they reopened the case a few years later, mm -hmm. and she said, um, and this is not an exact quote, but it's close. It's pretty close to, I'd be a liar to uh, say my my, uh, my brothers weren't uh, weren't involved in the occult. Um, wow. Yeah. So. Who knows? I'm, I mean, there's. Uh, I, I've never, I've never accused uh, Wheat Car of anything, um, except the only thing I've ever accused her of is she knows a lot more than she's telling. Right. Um, but uh, you know, uh, but there's a lot, there's a lot of circumstantial evidence putting her in a place of knowledge. Let's let's say that. Yeah, right. um, you know, I mean, I don't know everything my my sisters do. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, I got. I don't know. I think I would know something. 
you yeah. know, I mean, they all live together in the same house. Right. You know, it's a big house. Yeah. But they, they, and, yeah. And, and this, the, you know, I mean, at this, when the shootings happen, you know, we're, we're, I'm not even sure where where he lived. I actually, I think Michael lived in the city. I think he had an apartment in the city. Oh, he wasn't living in Yonkers at that point? I, I don't think John so. John was, though. Uh, um, well, he was until he went to the so, service. So then he went to North Dakota. But, yeah. but uh, this stuff, you know, there's 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 information out there that um, that John was involved in, in the Sikol stuff in high school. Yeah. Um, oh. So, you know, and they, they were somewhat close uh i don't know exactly age wise but i think they were like a year or two apart um and and we was also married to a uh, yarkus cop um and um yeah now all during this whole time that's going on and and even though they might not have called it the son of sam uh you know jim rostein talks about um you know this child trafficking and animal mutilations and what have you going on yeah. in, in 68 69 70 71 72 right. now this is long before son of sam um but uh you know i mean there's 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 uh there's stories floating around that uh in as early as like 64 65 uh you know john john Carl was, was, was involved he was in, in high school right, right he was yeah. in high school so um I, I just find it hard to Maury believe. Terry knew him from home. Well, well maybe, he didn't really know him. Something like that. He, he, you know, and, and again, some people think Maury was being evasive and, and out and out lying about his friendship with uh, John Carter. It was it was not a friendship. It, what happened was his freshman year in high school, they were both in the same homeroom. Yeah. And I don't know how. You know, you, what you guys remember from your homeroom. Home but, um, was just what you yeah, meant in the morning. Was, yeah, 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 or, or half the time, you know, yeah. if you if you, <laughs> was, if you were like if you were like me, you you ditched didn't, you didn't even show you up. Ditched yeah. home you didn't show usually. up to the third period right, anyway because yeah, right. you you know you were smoking a joint at the diner before yeah. you came to school. Well, buying but, a forty, but uh, <laughs> drinking a forty, but, uh, <laughs> and then he got kicked out. He got kicked out of school. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, so they were classmates. They were classmates for one year. Now, did Maury know of him? Yeah, he relates a story back in whatever sixty three, sixty. You know mm -hmm. that um, that uh, you know Maury knew he was a he was a bad egg. I, I forget the exact story. He was always considered a little odd. Yeah, uh, and, and strange. And yeah, I, I you know Maury actually talks about it um, at, at some point. Uh, some kid that didn't go to school shows up with John Carr and, he, and he's like, oh, what are they up to? And he's like, oh, they're both, you know, they're into the occult, they're into the, you know. So Maury did know about it, but again, um, I don't know, you go, you go back to your, your high school, I mean, it's a lot there's, of stupid there's, stuff. I, I, I probably have, I don't know, there's probably 350 kids in my, in my class in high school. <laughs> and, um, you know more. I probably didn't know well over 200 of them at yeah. all yeah. and then the 150 i didn't know i didn't know do you think i remember their names now <laughs> no, <way. laughs> no no so Just you know acquaintances really uh, uh, and, you know so yeah I, I don't think there's anything to to that story no. but uh oh. and, and everyone is free to do their own research yeah. <laughs> now let me just uh you know we're gonna end this soon okay i just want to cap everything off here with with saying with asking you out of this whole visit What's the biggest thing you got out of it that you could say it's made it worthwhile for you? What was the what was the biggest thing? No eat the egg salad. I think what's that? No eat the egg salad. <laughs> oh by the way, they had no eggs the egg sandwiches in there. <laughs> <laughs> and before I answer you your were question, looking forward to that. There is there is one there is one funny thing, uh oh, not funny thing, but uh, an interesting thing. Uh and both Howie and I uh, how he actually brought it up, and I agree with him, uh, that I think Berkowitz was really impressed with the depth of knowledge that, that we had in the whole case. And because um, uh, a few times, you know, he did one of these, like, because, you know, I, I pressed her, I really can't go into it now because uh, he didn't give me enough information to make it newsworthy. But, um, you know, I pressed him on. Like where were you? You know who was with you, and is you know. And I didn't want to lead them. Uh, I you know I figured I rather 
I'd rather get my answers a year later than be accused of leaving. Right. You know, Forcing something then, out of it. And yeah. saying, is it true that you know like you and Joe Blow were, mm -hmm. were together? And he says yes, and everyone says, well, you just let him. I, I didn't want to do that. Yeah. Um, but um, I'm sorry, I lost, lost my no, train. No, it, it's what's the biggest thing you got out of it? So the, bi the biggest thing to me for the first go round was uh, opening up the lines of communication and gaining his trust. Yeah. Uh, I got I got a few little small takeaways. Um, uh, I do want to, I do want to tell you this though. Uh, okay. I you know I pressed him quite a few times. At one time I called I said David you're lying to me. Uh, which out. which my girlfriend told me later she says she goes I think you were too rough on him I'm like he's a serial killer for God's sakes but anyway uh, you know I said don't tell I said uh, uh, you know when I asked the question was I followed how did you find me um, we're you know, driving around I said David you're lying to me I said you don't drive around that neighborhood that's my neighborhood I said you can go 20 blocks east uh, uh, west and be at Main Street Flushing. Talk to anybody. And there's 300 people you could shoot without without blinking an eye. There's people, four in the morning, there's people walking right, the streets. Right. It's, Main Street Flushing. You know, sure. It's like 42nd Street yeah. in, in Queens, right? Mm -hmm. So I said, so don't tell me you were driving around with somebody that you won't tell me who, looking, and you just happened to come upon me. I said, that makes absolutely no sense. And again, he hung his head. Yeah. So that was that you felt he was yeah. lying about. Yeah. Wow. But in in your questioning with that, do you feel that he targeted you specifically, or was it just let's get a couple in a car? He did not give me he, an answer, so I can't answer that answer question. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So you don't have yeah. any idea. On I, that. I'm I'm no closer. And again, and naysayers are going to say, oh, you know, he's just leading you on. Um, everyone's entitled to their opinion. I was there, and um, I have a goal. Um, I have a call. I know. I know what I want to know, and if I can find out more, that's great. But I know, for at least for me, personally, what I need to know um, is what I'm striving for, and um, and I believe, based on the first three and a half hour visit, that he will tell me. Wow. You know, I, I yeah. you know, I'm certainly willing to go up there. Um, yeah as many times as it takes but uh has he gotten back to you since your response from being there no unfortunately because of the holidays. holidays i wanted to get it out to him like that monday but um it was you know thanksgiving yeah. week yeah so i i eventually did get the letter out friday um but again he probably didn't even get it till monday and now it's wednesday so who knows maybe tonight um uh, i'll get a, a notification that he answered okay. okay all right cool thank you again for coming on yeah, fantastic man. guest thank you brother man and uh you know keep keep us up to date what's going on we'll have you on again yeah another time if you like keep you posted yeah. um yeah just give me a plug 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 my book for yeah. christmas oh, yeah. let's, let's, show, let's show it's one a, more time it's it's a great stocking stuff yes it is it's son of <laughs> sam okay. and it's an easy read the too. truth about yeah. why i wasn't shot by david berkowitz by yeah. Carl denaro and brian whitney Get it on Amazon yeah. and other places. Or you can contact me personally, and I can yeah. I can ship it off to you. Yeah. Uh, uh, What's the best way to reach you, Carl? Yeah. Uh, my my email address you can use, which is uh, C D X, uh, the number two U S at Yahoo dot com. Uh, you know, I'm I'm it's I'm very easy to find. If you Google my name, there's a million ways. <laughs> I think I I think my cell phone number is on the internet. So wow. you even have a website. You know, I, I do website. I do, but um, it it's uh, I set up a website for the book and um, it's up and running, but there's really not much there. And to be honest with you, there's only been there hasn't been a whole lot of hits because of the unofficial and the official yeah, yeah. Uh, Facebook pages, group. Yeah. People yeah. are using that. So um, I haven't really up. I didn't even think of bringing my book to get signed. Yeah, <laughs> you, you, you signed mine do it last next time. time yeah. yeah, I know. I, I got it next time. Well, I, we're gonna meet soon. Yeah, we're gonna hang out. Yeah, we're gonna get lumped up. Yeah, we're gonna get lumped up, up. <laughs> yeah, real soon. We're gonna get lumped up on a Sunday. <laughs> yes, like the old days. <laughs> All right, oh, man. So, so call again. Thank you so thank much. You. All right, all right. All right. And man. definitely get the book for Christmas. Everybody, for anybody that loves a uh, story, of Sam and me. Get it. Get so it. great, easy read. It's not even it's that affordable expensive. and 
You can even call, call for your copy. I'll sign it for you. Once yeah. you read the once you read the book, I'll answer any question. <laughs> but you gotta read. You gotta <laughs> buy you gotta and read, read the book. You gotta, you gotta read, read the book. It. All right, okay, people. So on that note, what do we always say? Don't get drunk. Get, get lumped, lumped up. up. <laughs> See you next time. Take care, people. All right. <laughs>